Today we are building on from the video that was looking at complex roots of quadratics to go ahead and look at the complex roots from other types of polynomials. And we're going to start by looking at a cubic. So here's our cubic to solve. Now obviously we can't go ahead and apply the quadratic formula like you saw on the previous video with quadratics because we have a cubic. But what we can do is apply the factor theorem to try and find one of the factors of this polynomial first. Then we can divide through by that factor and get the resulting quadratic and solve that. So I'm going to step you through that process. So if we call this polynomial p of x, then we can try out factors that might go into it. So we're looking at factors of um, minus 1. Keeps things nice and easy because that's only 1 and minus 1. So if we try p of 1, we get 1 cubed minus 1. So we're down to 0. We get plus 1 minus 1. So that comes to 0. So we know that x minus 1 is a factor. We also know that x equals 1 is one of our roots. So now if we divide that polynomial through by x minus 1, we can find um, the quadratic factor and then solve that too. So there's the result of the long division. You could also do it by algebraic juggling, and that's on a previous video if you need to go look up how to do that. But now we can express p of x as being x minus 1 um, multiplied by x squared plus 1. So we get that x equals 1 is a root. We can get the other root by doing um, x squared plus 1 equals 0. So x squared is minus 1. So x is the square root of negative 1 rather than plus or minus of it, which gives us plus or minus i. So our three roots we can then state as being x is 1, i, and minus i. Now one useful thing to notice there is this, um, this part of what we had here, the complex roots here, they always come in conjugate pairs. So these are the conjugates of each other. So that is true when you're solving a polynomial that has real coefficients. So you'll see this polynomial at the top here. As long as all of those coefficients are real numbers, your complex roots will always come in conjugate pairs, and that's the conjugate root theorem. Now we can use that little theorem um, to our advantage. If we know one of the complex roots, then we can immediately write down the other one as its conjugate pair and use that to find further roots. So here's our example. We've got z equals minus 2 plus i is a root of this equation here. Um, now, just one thing to note, we often have complex equations are noted with z's instead of x's, so that's how, why I'm switching to using z here. Right, now we need to find the other roots. So if z is minus 2 plus i, its complex conjugate will also be a second root because all of the coefficients of this equation here are real numbers. So we can straight away write down the second root as being minus 2 minus i, because it's the conjugate of the root we already know. Then from each of those roots, we can write down a factor of that polynomial by doing z minus the root. So here we've got z plus 2 minus i from doing z minus this first root here, and then we've got the z minus the second root makes this one. Now, if we expand that out, doing so very carefully, um, then we can uh, work from there. So we've got three terms in our double bracket, so just be careful that you catch each of the multiplication as you go. And that expands like so. And we're going to simplify this down now, so we get z squared plus 4z. The i z's cancel out, so do the two i's, so we're left with plus 4 and then minus i squared. Well, i squared is minus 1, so minus minus 1, we're going to add it on to the 4, and we end up with a plus 5. From there, we should be able to find the final factor. So by comparing this one with our original equation here, the easiest way to do this, you could do division, but we, it's probably faster to do inspection. So we know that uh, we can do this final factor here would be z plus a, a number. We don't know what that is. I'm just going to call it A for now. Um, and compare it to z cubed plus z squared minus 7z minus 15. Now, what I should have really had a blank space in front of this 
um, z here as well because it could have had a coefficient there but just comparing it with the z cubed here z squared would have to be multiplied by a singular z here to make the z cubed and then the final term here minus 15 has to be five times that a there so that a has got to be a negative three to make that work and you could complete the expansion and check that it works if you wanted to so our final factor is z minus three which would which there gives us our final roots so now the roots are that we have z is minus two plus i z is minus two minus i and our final root from that factor we just found z can be three